This is a Rolly 35S. I recently picked this camera up for a hundred bucks online without knowing if it would work. Now that might sound kind of crazy to do, but I did some research and I looked at the photos and I saw that the lens was still in the casing in the ad and the person said it seemed to be broken. Now, I kind of doubted that. It's a fully mechanical camera and mechanical cameras tend to work and I order a lot of cameras online without knowing if they'll work or not. The mechanical ones almost always do. I had one Pentax Spotmatic that didn't work, but I know the problem. It's just a little bit, I haven't really figured out how to fix it yet, but I know what the problem is. Anyway, so I didn't know if I blew it or not, if I wasted a hundred bucks, but I had a good feeling it would work out. The day it came, worked perfectly. And so I got a three to $400 camera for just a hundred bucks. I was incredibly excited to shoot this camera. So I quickly loaded it up with film, and today I want to share that roll of film with you guys. Now, I have some mixed feelings about that roll. However, those feelings aren't so much about the camera, it's more about that roll I shot, some challenges I faced, and some adjustments I would make going forward. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to try to make this really quick because I've got a lot of work I want to do, but I really want to keep pushing myself to try to make a video every day starting today. So let's get into it. This is the first shot I took with the Rolly. As you can see, I actually missed my focus. But I think the kids kept moving around. They didn't understand that they had to stay still. And so they were moving in and out of my zone that I was focused into. So the way a zone focusing camera works is that you can't actually focus like with a rangefinder or an SLR. Basically you're gauging the distance and you're setting it to the lens. So if you think they're five feet away, you set it to five feet, etc. Now the problem is if you're shooting at a shallow aperture, like let's say f 2.8 or something, is that it's really going to be easy to miss your focus. If you're shooting at f16 or higher, f8, etc., you actually have more leeway because you have a greater range of depth. So it was the last day of school, so I brought my kids some vintage cameras, which they went absolutely nuts over. They were a little disappointed when I told them they couldn't actually get the film for it, but um, I thought it would be a cool thing to collect for them and they did shoot film this session and they absolutely loved it they went nuts over it so it was really exciting it's really exciting seeing them go crazy over a 70 year old camera um, the girl in the middle is holding my 70 mark ii and she was going crazy over that too but they especially really liked the retro cameras so I was really disappointed, to be honest, with this initial roll, and that's because my images ended up overly dense. So with film, you're actually recording information on that negative, and the more information you record, or the more you expose, the denser that negative actually is. And remember, it's a negative, so if it's dense, not a lot of light gets through, therefore areas are going to be very light because it's getting more ex less exposure. If a negative is very thin, a lot of light gets right through. Personally, I prefer a dense negative, and I think most people prefer a dense negative to a thin negative. Ideally, you're going to be spot on with your exposure, but if you overexpose a little bit, it kind of gives you a safety net, I guess you could say. So normally, because I always process in diaphine, I kind of know what speeds diaphine will f push different films to. So for example, even though Tri-X is an ISO 400 film, diaphine overexposes it by about two stops. And actually it's almost three. So usually it's at 1600. That's what the manufacturer actually recommends you shoot it at. But what happens is if you want a denser negative, 1250 is a good way to go. So that's what I did. But I think I made the mistake of also compensating by overexposing manually as well, not just rating it differently. And I ended up with those dense negatives that were a little too dense. And the thing about dense negatives is that I've found personally that it prints well in the dark room, but it becomes more of a challenge when scanning it. So I was just really frustrated. But I scanned these in a hurry and didn't have that much time to look at them and the 
more time I spent looking at them, the more I realized I actually really liked the images this camera produced. Here is a shot, a few shots in Venice. You guys can see with the dense negative, it it's a little bit less contrasty. Whereas Tri-X can be extremely contrasty. It's known as a contrasty film. I wanted to kind of push the limits of the camera, but also of my own skill. So I challenged myself to freeze action, get sports shots with a camera that's really not built for sports photography. I think this image I actually overexposed even more. So you can kind of you can kind of tell the difference between this shot and this one. And these blown out areas right here, I think that's because it's just so dense that not much light on the scanner was getting through. You can see here too, I have a blown out area. One thing I like to do, I'll go back. One thing I like to do is embrace a camera's quirks. So this camera has zone focusing. Even though I did challenge myself to use it for something it's not great at, I also like to embrace what it is good at or embrace its flaws or limitations. So if I have a camera with zone focusing, I'm usually not trying to shoot at like f2.8. I'm usually using it at f16 or higher and just going for as much depth as I can get. Here I think I was at f22, however, this guy was walking into my shot, which I actually wanted, but it wasn't, he was too close to actually capture him in depth. Right there you have my Ricoh 35, another camera I'm testing right now. I have not seen film come out of it yet, but I really love this camera. I wanted a close shot of it, but this camera doesn't have a very good minimal focusing distance. It's actually, I believe, three feet. Same with this Ricoh. So you can't really get that close, and that's a problem. But usually you wouldn't use this camera for like macro photography. It's something you're gonna use for street photography most likely. Here's my friend Sonia. Here I think I was actually backed up exactly three feet as best I could measure. And I was able to shoot at a very low aperture and still get her in focus. But here, I don't know what happened. I missed it, or maybe she moved. I forgot to reset my scale. Here, I was hoping that at F16, I think, or maybe F22, I'd be able to get the skater in focus and the background, but it looks like I ended up focusing more on the background. I may have set it to infinity. You guys can kind of see how I lose detail here. Here's Brixton. So I think the third day I took this camera out to shoot, I kind of just took a walk around my neighborhood and discovered this old church. This church was built in the 1800s by Jebediah Kim. It's a Korean church, now a senior citizen place. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Activity center. Here's Brixton looking handsome with his bow tie. No, normally you would not want, if you're shooting at a high aperture like an f16, f22, you can get a lot in focus. And so you can't separate this truck from your subject by using, you know, background blur. So I shouldn't have positioned him here. I should have positioned him over here, somewhere where he wouldn't blend into the background. And I think I knew that when I was shooting it. The problem was he was in the middle of the street and I just wanted to be quick about it.
So after I spent some time looking at these images, especially when it wasn't way overexposed, like this wasn't as overexposed, I don't think, I actually really like the way it renders, it renders different tones. It has this great gradation. You can see even my blacks here have information in them. So what we can do, my keyboard would work. You can actually look at the histogram over here and you can see that my black my blacks, excuse me, and my brights, my highlights, are actually all in the range of the graph, which is a good thing. And yeah, I could add more contrast. Here's as shot. So yeah, it actually was a little flat. In this image, I did add some contrast, but if you can add contrast, it's not the end of the world if you end up with a flat-ish image. Let's just see how it looks at strong. Yeah, not bad. And it's still in the appropriate range. I would say this would come down to personal taste, preference. Maybe somewhere between medium and strong contrast would work best. Here I'm testing my accuracy again and seeing if I can get at exactly three feet. And here I'm just trying to finish the roll. I was really excited about this one. Here's my friend Ariel. Getting coffee. And Brixton, every time I turn, tries to call for help and get away from me because I love him too much. Here's Brixton chilling. Brixton in front of a van. And this one was a focusing fail, which is too bad. All right, that's it. So overall, I actually really, really, really like this camera. It is fun to use. Using scale focusing is kind of fun. Anything different to me is fun. I have shot thousands and thousands and thousands of images professionally on a digital SLR. And any new novel experience, I have a great time with. And the reason I collect old cameras is not for the material aspect. I, I don't care about owning things, but I really genuinely love using these cameras. I, it's just so fun to try different things, try different challenges, and I really, really admire the craftsmanship of these all-mechanical cameras especially. Let's take one last look. Alright, so I really hope to share more images with you guys in the future. I have an episode of some photography show coming out with this camera in use. Look for that. If you guys are enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. You can check out more of my images at, at Retrograding on Instagram, or you can visit my website, mickmillman.com. If you guys are looking to take darkroom photography classes, we offer classes for adults at Barnstall Art Center in Los Angeles. So if you're in Los Angeles especially, get in touch. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, guys, stay tuned for the next one.